Greetings, beloved. <clears throat> I'm Pastor Kiyomo Butler. This is Restoration Victory Ministries. Hope all is well with you guys. Hey, listen, man, let us jump right into this. Uh, on this Christmas Eve, this Christmas Eve teaching that we're going to have, um, I think this is something that the Holy Spirit really needs us as a body of Christ to hear, not only in celebration of the Lord's birthday, but going into and entering into this new year. I think that as a body of Christ, uh, as a whole, and individually, some of us, not all of us, but some of us need to rethink the way we serve God or, or we th rethink our understanding about God or, or rethink really what's most important to God and what's most important to Jesus, not what's most important to denominations or theology or uh, your race or the group of people you hang around and what they feel God should and shouldn't do, not what's so most important to what's being taught in different churches and different doctrines and uh, different understandings because unfortunately that that in itself is um, a major issue for us as a body of christ i i understand being um raised in a southern baptist church in louisiana i understand that based upon a person's socioeconomic background and based upon their race um, where they were raised who they were raised by you know what color they were we're going to serve and worship differently, different type of preaching styles, different type of music that we like to hear, things of that sort. But, excuse me, but there's only one gospel and the gospel of Jesus Christ should be the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we've, in a lot of cases, cases gotten so, um, I want to say bogged down or, or headstrong. Uh, I've never understood how two Christians can argue about something that's in this Bible right here. And they argue about it and they come come away with different thought patterns about the same scripture and not just babes in Christ, but brothers and sisters with theological degrees and PhDs. And we still argue about the gospel of Jesus Christ, which no matter what no one tells you, there's not a person on this earth that believes in Jesus Christ that can say that that's God's will. Or that's the Lord's will. Or that's the will of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as it is in the church. The church meaning the body of Christ. We all know that the Bible says there's one Lord, there's one Holy Spirit, there's one faith, there's one baptism, there's one God the Father who is above all, over all, through all, and in all. The, the exact scripture says there's one body and there's one spirit. As, as you were called in one hope of your calling, there's one Lord, there's one faith, there's one baptism. There's one God, the Father, who is above all, over all, and through you all. And that, we're going to start right there. Now, I'm about to jump into this message before we even pray. Let us bow our heads first for a moment of prayer. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name, giving you the glory and the praise. We ask, Father, that the word that will go forth today will be all of you and none of me, led by the Holy Spirit of God. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to use that scripture, thank you, Holy Spirit, as a foundation for this teaching. There's one God that is in all, through all. It's in, one, there's one Lord, there's one faith, there's one baptism. There's one God, the Father, that is above all, over all, in all, and through all. So there's one God, the Father, there's one Lord, there's one Spirit, there's one faith, there's one baptism. But there's one God through the Holy Spirit of God that is in each of us. So if each of us is led by the Holy Spirit of the same God, why does each of us come away with our own understanding? And this is particularly for, you know, for those of us who go to uh, churches in our neighborhood and in our city and in our peer group, then this may not be something that you really understand. But for those of us who have been and traveled and, and met and fellowship with Christians from different walks of life, different denominations, different races. For those of us who are, you should, all you got to do now is turn on the internet, turn on YouTube, and you will see you can get thousands of different teachings from thousands of different teachers, all really coming away with different understanding. And in a lot of cases, if you're on the internet, you can watch men and women of God who are supposed to be teachers attacking other men and women of God and their teaching style or their belief or their understanding. And the problem is, 
the person that's doing the attacking on this particular group of people, there's someone attacking him. And it's like a big circle of Christians just infighting. But we're all supposed to have the same God. We're all supposed to have the same Jesus. We're all supposed to have the same spirit. We're supposed to be the body of Christ. We're supposed to be a unified body of Christ. A lot of us, unfortunately, beloved, we really don't care about the unity of the body of Christ. And I'm saying this, and I know this is going to ruffle some feathers, but hey, it is what it is. A lot of us just don't care. A lot of us don't really care about what Christians are going through and dealing with in California or New York. If you're in Atlanta, I'm in Atlanta, so I'm speaking as someone in Atlanta or Louisiana or Christians in the Ukraine or Christians in Israel or Christians in Africa. We don't really care about them. Like we don't really care about their beliefs because we're so stuck in my understanding of things makes all the sense. And really, we don't care about Christians on the other side of town if they're teaching something that's different than what is being taught to me. And then we really have gotten these blinders where we think that only what our pastor, teacher, minister says is right. Like most of us don't study to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Most of us don't seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, knowing then all things should be added unto you. Most of us don't, when we read this Bible, understand that we are spirit beings. We have a soul, we live in a body, but we're spirit beings. Most of us take our soulish realm, which is our mind, our will, our emotions, our intellect, and we take that, and then from where we are intellectually, or where we are in our feelings, where we are in our emotional realm, we try to take that and make the word of God fit into our emotional realm. Praise God. That has been historically the issue. That is why we have denominations and every other type of sect and faction within the body of Christ. People have taken the scripture and tried to make scripture fit into their soulish realm. And then they try to make that their version of, of scripture or Christianity instead of allowing the Holy Spirit of God, because there's one spirit, there's one God, the father who is above all, over all, through all and in all. There's one God. So that same God that's in this rich man in California is in this poor man in California. The same God that's in this rich man in New York is in this poor man or woman in Africa. It's the same God. So there shouldn't be variations of the gospel because it's only one gospel. But again, we take our soulish realm, our mind, our will, our emotions, our intellect, our socioeconomic background, and we try to Make that the gospel that fits us. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago, and it's evident, you know, the KKK did it. We just use the stuff that's big that everybody knows. In slavery, they used the Bible to fit their socioeconomic background, their situation, and what they were trying to do and who they were trying to control. And they really thought that they were right. And I'm just saying that to make us kind of put this in proper perspective. The KKK, they, a lot of those brothers think that they're Christians. They're Christians. They go to church. You have ministers that are part of the KKK. They, in their mind, have, have convinced themselves that they are right. A lot of Christians that are violent, because I'm, I'm not picking with a certain race, black pride Christians that are in-your-face Christianity, bold and down for whatever Christianity, against white Christianity or against a white Jesus or whatever it is that they're against have made up in their mind that they are right. But at the end of the day, if we all are right, then God wrong? Are we calling God a lie? Are we saying that God, no God, wait, pause, time out, God, time out, time out, God, listen, I hear what you're saying, God, but I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that, God, because I'm right, they not right. I'm right, they're not right. And everybody's doing that. I'm right, they're not right. I'm right, they're not right. I'm right, they're not right. And at that point, the body of Christ, we're suffering, we're losing. We cannot win because we are defeated before we even start because we're on the same team, but we're all out there on the field running our own plays. It's like God has given us a playbook, this, this Bible. Okay, now live by this Bible. Live according to this Bible. This Bible is the rule. Then we get out there in the game. We decide we want to change the Bible. We want to fix the Bible. We don't like that part of the Bible. Audible, audible, audible. 
that's just not God never like I don't know I don't see nowhere in the world where God said that was good I don't see anything in the Old Testament or the New Testament where God said I need your help writing my word no, God said, my thoughts are not your thoughts and my ways are not your ways. Just as the earth is high above the heavens, so is my thoughts high above your thoughts and my ways above your ways. That's what God says. God says, I am the Lord, I change not. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. The Bible says it's impossible for God to lie. The Bible says, let God be true and let every man be a liar. So if God doesn't change and if God said we have one Holy Spirit on the inside of us, and why are we so divided as a body of Christ? It can only be because we have allowed our soulish realm, our mind, our, mind, our will, our emotions, our intellect to dictate what we spiritually think is correct instead of allowing the Holy Spirit of God to completely change us on the inside. Now, beloved, this, wasn't even, <laughs> this is not even what I thought I was going to talk about today. God is amazing, but someone needs to hear this because, listen, going into 2020, 2024, 2020, 2024, going into 2024, as we can already see, beloved, things are getting progressively bad, not only in the United States of America, but in this whole little thing we call Earth, in the whole world. There's wars, there's rumors of wars, there's earthquakes, famines, pestilences. So we are in the tribulations. The birth pains are getting worse and worse. And so for anyone with wisdom, Anyone with a mind to really just sit back. You know, I know all of us have been hearing this all our lives. You know, we're in the end time. You know, Jesus is coming back soon. It's closer to the end. But beloved, some things are happening now that really a wise man that's led by the spirit can really sit back and say, okay, because Christianity is not just in your neighborhood or in your city or in your state or in the United States of America. Christianity is worldwide. As a matter of fact, Christianity started in the Middle East. It didn't start in the United States of America. So really, biblically, a lot of the things that are happening over there are more closer to discerning the sign of the times and what's happening here in the United States. And that is the first thing that wisdom will show you if you really are being wise and really reading its word. So what do we need to do as Christians to assure that we are on the right side of this thing when Jesus comes back? Or we're on the right side of this thing when tribulation gets worse and worse. You know, COVID happened and COVID was just a preview. But let's just, for the sake of argument, again, it's not even what I want to talk about today, but we're going to deal with this quickly as we talk about what we want to talk about. We'll get out of here. Let's say COVID ha happens again or something like COVID or something worse than COVID. Where are you spiritually in your personal relationship with Jesus? How will you handle it? Are you spiritually equipped to handle something that may come down the pipeline? If everything goes back to normal and it's another 20, 30, 40, 50 years, this won't affect most of us that's watching. Let's say another COVID comes. Let's say 2024, a different type of COVID comes, a different type of situation. For those of us in the United States of America, what if we have another 9-11 type situation or a war type situation? that other people in other places are dealing with, are you equipped in your personal relationship with Jesus Christ to handle it? Like, I don't know about you guys, but the thing that I want to hear from the Lord the most is, that's a man behind my own heart. That, that is a friend of God. Like, for us, really, what I wanted to talk about today was, what could we give to Jesus Christ, who has everything, to honor his birthday, to honor his presence? And the reality of it is, the only thing that you could really give to Jesus, or the only thing that you could truly do to honor Jesus, is to grow in your personal relationship with him. To get away from anything and anyone in any situation that pulls you away from him, and only be involved in things that pulls you closer to him. Anything religious, anything in the name of Jesus Christ, anything worldly, Anything that separates you from, because like I said when we first started, there's so many different kinds of doctrines. So any doctrine that causes you to have any type of hate or envy or backbiting or judgment or finger pointing at another person or another group of people, that is not of Jesus. Because beloved, trust me, the closer you get to Jesus, 
the less you want to do that. The closer you get to Jesus, the less you're concerned about doing that. The closer you get to Jesus, the more you want the Lord to change and touch and bless all those in the body of Christ that's hurting. The anger, backbiting, gossip, pointing fingers, being overly judgmental, that's not of Jesus. That's really not of Jesus. Jesus was a man. Jesus was bold. Jesus wasn't soft. But Jesus didn't walk around judging people. Jesus let Judas Iscariot, who he knew was going to betray him, who, who was really responsible for his death, he let Judas hang with him all the way until the end, until it was time to, for, for, for scripture to be fulfilled. He didn't walk around angry. He didn't walk around judging. He didn't walk around pointing fingers. He didn't walk around talking about Judas. Read the Bible. He didn't do any of that. He never really called Judas by name until the end. So the point that I'm making is we have to, if we're a unified body of Christ, we have to start developing a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, both personally and as a body of Christ. We have to desire to see the body of Christ win. We have to desire to just be in fellowship with the Father. Like that has to be your, as they say, your modus operandi, what you're known for, what, what you're about. You have to be known as someone who loves Jesus. And your whole desire has to be to hear God say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter ye now into the joy of the Lord. You're, you need to be able to hear God say, oh, that's my son. I'm well pleased in that son or that daughter. Oh, that's a friend of God right there. We have to honor God with our whole body and with our whole spirit, which belongs to him. We got to get away from, you know, the, the three things, the three shorts, the three little short teachings that I've had recently. We got to get away from this fake Christianity, faking it till we make it, thinking we got time, thinking it's OK, thinking it's OK. I could be a Christian. I could call on the name of Jesus Christ, but I could do what I want in the back, in the booth, in the corner, in the dark, as long as nobody knows. God judges us according to the secret of, secrets of our heart. So if you're living that kind of Christian lifestyle, it's not going to work out well for you in judgment. It's not me. This is the word. I'm going to show you. And the last thing I'm going to say is going to show you that Jesus said. it. But it's not going to work out well for you, beloved, if that's what you're doing. If you're playing Christian games, if you, if you got the T-shirt and the bumper sticker and the hat and the magnet and, and you're, you're faking it and you're not really serious about it. And you're just, you know, you're doing the thing. You're, you, you're calling out on the name of Jesus, but you're not living the life of Jesus. That's not going to work because, again. God judges you according to the secrets of your heart. And if you're in a church situation, church in this church foundation, church group, church denomination, any theological denomination, prayer group, if you within your own heart have unforgiveness, anything like that that you're doing that you know is not right, anything that's pulling you away from the, the, the truth of all this that I'm just saying is anything that's pulling you farther away instead of forcing you getting closer to Jesus Christ, beloved, you got to walk away from it. Times are about to change in 2024. And we must be ready. Ready. And that's a prophetic word. And listen, the last thing that you want is to be a year from now on this day, next year, looking back on 2024, saying to yourself, oh my God, I should have listened to Pastor Butler. I should have listened to that prophet speaking the word of God. Like I should have listened to that brother. Things would be so much different in my life, so much better if I had just listened. Because all of us know, you know if I'm talking to you or not. You know if the situations, the people, the places, the events, the environments, the attitudes that you have, who you are as a person, you know if all those things foster you getting closer to Jesus Christ or if they foster pulling you away from Jesus Christ. You know if those things are rooted and grounded in light are rooted and grounded in darkness. We all know. You all know if you have hate, anger, bigotry, animosity, jealousy, envy, murdering, strife, or rap, strife. You know, if you're not really sure about whether or not you believe Jesus, if your church is, excuse me, teaching a different kind of Christianity that doesn't line up to the word, if you're following someone that's popular because they're theatrical, but their theatrics don't line up with the word, then because Paul was theatrical. 
Let's let's keep it real. Paul was theatrical. Peter was theatrical. You can even say that Jesus was theatrical. But their teachings and their theatrics lined up with the word. I don't have a problem with a good preacher or a good teacher. I don't preach and teach. I just don't know how to do it. That's not my calling. But I don't have a problem with a brother or a sister that can preach and teach the word or sing or, you know, they know how to make this thing pop. They know how to make it connect with you on a spiritual level that others can't. I love that. I have no problem with that. As long as what they're doing lines up with the word of God. But for those of us who know that there are many out there who aren't lining up with the word of God, they're more worried about lining their pockets. They're worried about their likes. They're worried about their followers. They're worried about their church congregations. They're worried about what people are saying about them. They're worried about being accepted in the public eye. They're worried about being part of the in crew. They're worried about being cool. They're worried about everything but fostering you in a relationship that pulls you closer to Jesus Christ. Then, beloved, in this 2024, it's time to get away from that. It's time to get away from the Christian games. It's time for faking it till we make it in Christianity because we have to understand that God judges us according to the secrets of our heart. If you're doing things in the name of Jesus Christ, you're just doing them in the name of Jesus Christ, but there's really no Jesus Christ in you or in that situation, Jesus Christ is not there. The Holy Spirit is not divided. So we could be doing things in the name of Jesus, saying things in the name of Jesus, professing with our mouth Jesus. The Bible says if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, then you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And whosoever shall believe, whosoever shall call it on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So if you're doing things out there, if you're professing with your mouth, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. But if you're not believing in your heart, if what's going on there is really not Jesus, if you know that it's not Jesus, then guess what? Jesus is not there. Wearing a t-shirt, wearing a hat, casting out demons, prophesying, making people walk, healing people, charismatic in uh, ministry, healing ministry, great preachers, great teaching, great all this, all of it feels good. But you know in your heart that Jesus is not there. You know in your heart that that environment or that situation is not led by the Holy Spirit of God. Guess what? God is not there. It's not just believing or confessing with your mouth, but it's believing in your heart. And when you believe certain things in your heart, then your lifestyle shows what you believe. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So if what you're thinking in your heart manifest in your life but yet you're saying this but who you really are behind closed doors or who the person is behind closed doors or the situation or the environment doesn't match the word christ is not there beloved and this is not me saying it i'm just gonna give you an example of this and then we'll go in the gospel in the gospel of matthew and i like to give you but i like for you know we have to do a little work ourselves sometimes in the gospel of matthew when jesus was, i'm going to say matthew 5 6 and 7 so you can look for it a little bit <laughs> Five, six, and seven. Jesus said, the, he was talking to the apostles and disciples. He said, listen, in that day, I'm going to close with this. In that day, many are going to come up to me and say, Lord, have I not prophesied in your name? Lord, have I not cast out devils in your name? Lord, in your name, have I not done many great works? And Jesus is going to say unto them, depart from me. I never knew you, you who practice lawlessness. Just think about that as we close. Like just really genuinely. Think about that. If you're involved with anything in the name of Jesus Christ, you're doing it in the name of Jesus now. You're doing it. Casting out devils, speaking in tongues, laying your hands on the sick and they shall recover. You're doing all these great things in, in the name of Jesus. But your heart is not with Jesus. And you know your heart is not with Jesus. You know your that situation is not with Jesus. You know the teachers and the preachers and the prophets and whatever we call ourselves on this earth, you know that situation is not right. It's not of God. You leave there emotionally aroused but spiritually you're broken praise god you go into a situation and while you're there emotionally your emotions because it's a show your emotions are on fire praise god that was a great sermon pastor preached that word Ooh, he sung that song but then when you leave out of there your spirit man is lost like you feel a lull in your spirit like while you're there your, your spirit is like eh, this is not for us but you continue doing it because it's something fun. It's exciting. It's in the name of Jesus. 
Jesus is not there. If you know that it's not right and you continue to do it, then you have no one to blame but yourself in the end. That is why the Bible says we have to study to show ourselves approved unto God a work when they need it not be ashamed. That's why the Bible says, bodily exercise profits a little, but exercising unto righteousness is profitable in all things, having the promise of the life that now is and the life that is to come. When you exercise yourself unto righteousness, because as Jesus just said, you can do all that stuff. You can cast out demons, you can prophesy, you can speak in tongues, you can lay your hands on the sick. And Jesus will still say to you, depart from me, I never knew you, you who practice lawlessness. I was never involved in all that. That was never about me. That was, that was something for the soulish realm. That was an emotional thing. That was your, your mind, your will, your emotions, your intellect controlling all that. But the Holy Spirit of God wasn't in control. I don't know about you, but that's the last thing that I want to hear Jesus say to me in judgment. So, beloved, listen. Anything that separates, anything that causes you spiritual unrest, Anything that's not right, anything that you feel in your spiritual discernment that that's just not right, this person, place, or situation is not right, you got to walk away. Because 2024, the time is coming and the time now is where those who worship the Father must worship Him in spirit and in truth, for God seeketh such to worship Him. God is a spirit. And when we worship Him, we must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Knowing, beloved, knowing for sure, that God will judge us according to the secrets of our heart. We have to decide that we want what we want individually and as a body of Christ, but it starts individually. We want God to look at us and say, now nah, that's a man or a woman behind my own heart. That person there, that person's a friend of God. You know, welcome my beloved son into, into my joy. Well done, my good and faithful servant. That's what we all should want to hear from Jesus Christ and from God the Father. Beloved, listen, glorify God in your whole body and your whole spirit, which belongs to him. If we want to honor Jesus at all on this Christmas that we're going into, glorify God. Make it a point that from now on, we're going to glorify God in our whole body and our whole spirit, which belongs to him. It doesn't matter what you've done before. I personally can say, hey, listen, I've done enough. Well, I can tell everybody, it doesn't matter what you've done before. It matters who you are now and how you decide to live your life from this day forward. God bless you. Enjoy your Christmas with your family. Look forward to speaking to you again. Bye-bye.